Hello everyone and thanks for your interest in shrimp feed formulations with krill meal. Today I would like to talk about the benefits of krill meal, how it acts as a feed attractant and can give a nutrient boost in shrimp diets. Also we'll show you a feed formulation example uh, looking at cost reductions. Yep, but then let's start with the first slide. Um, on this side, slide you see the shift in shrimp feed formulations over the years. So in the 1980s, uh, the formulations they were more fixed and they were kept a uh, secret, but they had a very high squid and fish meal inclusion. And this was possible because at the time, uh, prices of fish meal, they were below 300 US dollars per metric ton. And actually it was also unknown which nutrients uh, drive shrimp growth. But that was not an issue since uh, fish meal inclusion was so high, so all the nutrients were covered in the feed. But then in the 1990s, uh, this overuse of marine ingredients became unfeasible because then the prices of fish meal, they rose above 1000 US dollars per metric ton. Um, and then there was this shift to least cost formulations made on a nutrient basis. At the same time, there was also a change of the farmed species from Monodon to Vanamai. And uh, that is then an advantage because Vanamai is more omnivorous, so not only likes animal proteins, but also plant proteins. 2005 to nowadays, uh, there is now a drastic reduction in fish meal use. Formulations, they are on a nutrient and digestible basis. And it is also more popular to add crystalline amino acids and functional feed additives, uh, for example, for better gut health. Uh, we now also have specific shrimp feeds for every developmental stage. Yeah, so coming from a ingredient-based uh, formulation where we had the high inclusion levels of the ingredients that contain all the nutrients, uh, we are going now towards the nutrient-based formulation where the formulas, they are more flexible, uh, but then the exact nutrient requirements of shrimp, they need to be known. And that is what you see here. It's actually 45 essential nutrients. They need to be present in the diet for shrimp. So they cannot make them themselves. We have on the protein side, uh, essential amino acids. They need to be present in sufficient amounts. Uh, lipids, the fatty acids, linolenic acid, linoleic, but then also the long chain omega-3 fatty acids, EPA and DHA. Uh, cholesterol, rather expensive, um, phospholipids as well, needs to be added to the shrimp diet. Uh, then we have several minerals and also vitamins that need to be present. Now, when we look at this, uh, it's interesting to note that krill meal has uh, many of these nutrients. And that is uh, shown here. So around 60% of krill meal uh, is proteins. There is a well-balanced amino acid profile. So here only shown the essential amino acids. Uh, then there are also minerals and vitamins. Here is only the, the major ones that are shown. So there are a few more. And there is around 3% chitin, which comes from the exoskeleton. On the fat side, 25% fat. Uh, of the fat is 40%, which is in phospholipid form. And it is also the majority of the omega-3 fatty acids, they are bound to phospholipids. Then we have 20% omega-3 fatty acids, uh, EPA to DHA ratio 2 to 1. Um, a smaller amount of omega-6 fatty acids, 2%, then there is cholesterol, 0.5%, and also astaxanthin is present, which you also see here in the red pigmentation. 
Now, when we look at the feed, so what is the main cost driver? And we see it here cl clearly when we look at the volume distribution. It is the proteins here in blue that make up most of the volume. Um, interesting to note that uh, when we look at the marine protein, so let's say we have 15% marine proteins, they make up the majority of the cost. On the other hand, the plant proteins, uh, here it's 37%, uh, they will contribute a lower cost to the formula. Um, so it might be of interest to reduce the amount of fish meal, for example, and replace it with plant proteins or also animal proteins. And there are certain possibilities, uh, so it can be done either from plant proteins, uh, agriculture, or then also from animal byproducts. Um, they, ha they have the advantage that they are widely available at large quantities. Uh, they are quite price competitive and we can culture them. They are high in crude protein content. But then there are also certain issues because they can be deficient in one or more of these 10 essential amino acids. And often it is lysine or methionine, which are the first ones that are limiting. Um, it's also another issue that they do not contain the long chain omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, they can have lower protein digestibility and also poor attractability and palatability. Now, what would happen if we were to formulate on a protein base only? Uh, this is shown on this slide. Um, when we start with a uh, salmon meal diet, so around 14% in this group here, here we partially replace the salmon meal and in the dark orange ones, uh, salmon meal is fully replaced. And there are different protein sources. Um, by adding those, we see that the formula cost, which is shown in black, uh, reduces. So actually with the first one, this is swine plasma meal. Here it would increase, so this is quite expensive. But then when we go down to the feather meal, we have a, a cost reduction of around 11%. Um, tilapia meal here, 6%. Um, here we have the poultry and blood meal, uh, around 9% cost reduction. Um, so there is an advantage uh, cost-wise, but then we also have the issue that the shrimp body weight is reduced. And that's what is shown here in the blue line. Um, yeah, for example, here the feta meal, minus 16%. Um, it can be down to around 40% in the uh, feather and poultry meal. Um, so there is definitely an interest to also uh, think about the nutrients in shrimp diets. And here I have an example looking at this. So when we have a diet, let's say we start out with 25% of fish meal. Then we have 20% with the soybean meal. Um, soy protein concentrate, this is now always kept at 10%. Uh, here also poultry byproduct meal is used. And then this formula will give a cost of 570 US dollars per metric ton. Now let's say we want to reduce the fish meal. So we go down to 20%, then we have to increase here soybean meal um, and this gives us a better cost of 536 US dollars per metric ton. So we have a cost reduction of around 6%. Um, we could bring that down even further. So fish meal 15% increase than the soybean meal. But then I would suggest to uh, think about the missing nutrients and also about attractability and palatability. And you could, for example, include 2% of krill meal. 
Still, when we look at the cost, 536, uh, we still have a cost reduction of 6% when compared to the 25% fish meal group. Um, but this even, we can bring that even further down, 10% fish meal, but then uh, I would suggest to increase the krill meal inclusion. Uh, but even 0% fish meal, 4% krill meal, you will still have a cost reduction of around 20% of your feed. So even so, you add krill meal, but you reduce the fish meal, the cost will go down. Yeah, so besides nutrient levels, uh, what is also important are the feed attractants, and that is particularly in fish meal challenge diets. Um, these feeding stimulants, they are important to guide shrimp to feed because shrimp have very poor eyesight. Uh, instead, they depend on chemoreceptors for tactile smell and taste senses. And you see them distributed over the legs and around the mouth and on the antenna. So looking at krill meal, uh, it's actually a combination of different feed attractants. Uh, so when we are after feed attractants, we want to have a low molecular weight soluble compound that can leach out of the pellets into the water so the shrimp can detect it. Um, in this study is by Suresh and colleagues. They have compared krill meal to other uh, ingredients poultry byproduct meal, hydrolyzed feather meal, blood meal, anchovy fish meal, fish hydrolysate, and squid liver meal. Um, so we, when we look, for example, at nucleotides, we see that krill meal is rich in nucleotides, and it is also rich in the short peptides. That's what you see here. So those are the ones below one kilodalton, so less than nine amino acids. Krill meal also has a specific uh, smell, and that is because of TMA, which is converted to TMAO. Yeah, so here we have a study uh, that compares marine feed attractants. It was performed in Brazil. Um, we have a basal diet, 3% fish meal, and the other diets were then either supplemented with 3% salmon meal, this is the positive control group, or then for the negative control group is soy protein concentrate, and always at 3%. So we have krill meal, squid meal, squid liver meal, dried shrimp meal, shrimp head meal, sardine hydrolysate uh, was added at 5% because this one is liquid. When we see after 10 weeks of growth, uh, it is actually the 3% krill meal which achieved the highest final body weight, also with a lower FCR and a higher yield when compared to the other marine ingredients. In the next study, uh, authors they looked or wanted to find out so what are the minimal levels of krill meal that are needed to improve shrimp growth performance in plant-based diets. Um, the control group, no fish meal, uh, test diets had low amounts of krill meal, so 0 0.5, 1, 2 or 3%. Um, as you can see, also after 10 weeks, 2% of krill meal is actually enough to have a significantly improved final body weight. At 3% inclusion, uh, we have about 17% increased growth. Yeah, so then in the next study is by Derby and colleagues. So they wanted to find out why do the shrimp grow more when there is krill meal in the diet. Um, they have taken individual shrimp and they have fed one pellet after another. And then they looked at uh, so how much were the shrimp sitting there and eating and how many pellets did they actually eat. Um, control group, no fish meal, then 1, 3 or 6% of krill meal were added in the treatment groups. When we look at the eating time, there is uh, an increase of 120 minutes, for example, 
in the 6% krill meal group. Uh, so the shrimp they eat longer and therefore also they eat more and then this is reflected in the quantity of pellets they have eaten. Um, and this would then suggest uh, that they also grow more. So the authors they have uh, concluded that krill meal is a chemo stimulant uh, that increases the palatability by increasing the feeding time, so not actually the speed, and to the amount eaten. In the next study, um, they wanted to see how can you exchange costly ingredients uh, by the addition of krill meal in the feed. Uh, again, it's a gross experiment over 10 weeks with uh, Wanamai. Uh, the control diet, so 15% fish meal, so that was reduced to 7% fish meal in the test diets. Also the fish oil was reduced from 3% to 2% and then the squid meal and the cholesterol, they were completely removed. Instead, uh, 1, 3 or 5% of krill meal, they were added. And what the results show is that it takes actually 5% of krill meal. I should maybe also add that this is under a little bit special conditions, so it's high salinity conditions, but it takes 5% to have the same gross performance as the control group. FCR is already reduced at uh, 3%. Um, Yes, but when we look at the cost of the diet, um, we find that the 5% krill meal diet, where certain ingredients were reduced, so the fish meal and the fish oil, and no squid meal and no cholesterol, is actually 7% uh, cheaper. Even so, we have added 5% of krill meal. Then this is a study from India. Here they have also looked at the fish meal, two different fish meal inclusions. So we have low fish meal, 6%, and then a moderate level at 12%, and then added either 2, 4, or 6% of krill meal. Uh, when we just compare, so looking at the yield per tank, and we just compare the control groups, you see the effect it has to reduce fish meal from 12% to 6%. So there is a significant reduction in yield, but this you can counterbalance by the addition of uh, krill meal. So when uh, fish meal inclusions are higher, then you also to need to see this improved uh, yield per tank. You need 4% of krill meal. You can go lower if uh, you are at 6% fish meal, so you challenge your diets more. Then already at 2%, you will see improved yield and growth. And also interesting, right, there is a, a better survival if we add more of the krill meal. Then we have here a recent study was performed in Thailand. Um, here also comparing high fish meal diets with low fish meal diets, but in addition they have looked at the uh, health condition of hepatopancreas. So in mammals, hepatopancreas is the liver and the pancreas together. Um, in this study they have found that uh, by the addition of krill meal to the diets, the R and the B cells of the hepatopancreas, they are increased. And this would suggest uh, that uh, they have a better digestive enzyme production, nutrient absorption, and lipid glycogen storage functions. Uh, looking at the gross performance, so in the positive control group, 20% uh, fish meal, if you reduce that to 7.5% fish meal, um, you really see the effect. So here we have the final body weight from 16.2 grams going down to 13.86 grams. 
Uh, same can be said for the yield and what increases is actually the feed cost per kilo shrimp produced. So here at 1.05 per kilo, it goes up to 1.25. Um, but we can work with this one here, so 7.5% of fish meal. We can add krill meal, either 2, 4 or 6%. And when we add 2% of krill meal to the negative control group, we are again at the same or similar level than the positive 20% fish meal group. Uh, this is also shown here in the feed cost per kilo of shrimp, and the yield is also comparable. But we could also go higher. Uh, we can go to 4% and then we will improve the final body weight. We'll also increase the yield and the cost per kilo shrimp produced remains the same. 6%, uh, there is only slightly more compared to the 4%. Uh, and then also, if you go too high, it will eventually flatten out the benefits and it will then also get too expensive to add too much of krill meal. Yes, so it's not only the feed nutrient levels that are important. Uh, we also have to think about the growth stage when we formulate diets. Um, so earlier growth stages, they require higher levels of dietary nutrients and also energy. Uh, it also depends if we formulate diets for uh, farming in semi-intensive shrimp ponds or do we want to have a diet for intensive shrimp ponds. Um, also of importance, what are the production targets? Uh, what is the FCR that you want to achieve? And digestibility of the ingredients is also something to consider, since you will need more of an ingredient when the digestibility is very low. And this brings me to the last slide. Um, so it is important to focus on key nutrients, and these are the essential amino acids and long-chain omega-3 fatty acids, phospholipids and cholesterol, and those are actually all present in krill meal. Uh, krill meal can also be used as an effective feed attractant. Um, or you can play around with formulas and take out expensive raw materials. And as mentioned, uh, that was fish meal, squid meal, soy lecithin or cholesterol, fish oil and amino acids and replace them with uh, krill meal. Uh, I would suggest to keep the inclusion levels between 3 to 5%, uh, around 5% in starter diets, but then lower in grower diets at 3%. We can use krill meal uh, to differentiate performance of low fish meal diets. Uh, we can use it to enhance shrimp feed intake in transition or medicated feeds, and also to reduce formula cost while improving performance in price sensitive feeds. Thank you for your attention and please reach out if you have any questions.